Good evening, Nice Guy Eddie here talking armor. Uh, a little bit of a different show tonight. This is the only piece of armor that I really own. Armor, I put that in quotes, remember that. <laughs> and I want to do a little bit of a review tonight about the Robert Brigandine. That is what this is marketed as. Uh, it is available through Medieval Collectibles. It is a match set or a three-piece set. It has the Robert Brigandine, the Robert Greaves, I'm sorry, Robert Bracers. And I'm not wearing them because my feet are off camera but the uh, Robert Greaves. So they have a set of Greaves, bracers, and this attractive studded leather hauberk, which is a more accurate description, but we'll get to that in a moment. I want to do a review of this. I want to touch upon three aspects of it. Um, aesthetics, protective value, and then overall quality of execution. I think all of these are important. Now right up front, I want to, I want to say that this was bought essentially as a costume piece. I think that should be pretty clear. Um, if it's not clear, I want to make it very clear. This was bought as a costume piece. I don't LARP. I don't look down on people who do. I don't reenact. I don't tell people who do to get a life. Whatever you like to do, and if, if this is something that's going to fit, well, listen to my review, and you'll see if you uh, want to check it out. Um, I go to the Ren Fairs a bit, and I do occasionally, uh, I love me a good uh, Halloween costume party. So I was looking for a good costume piece, and um, yeah, this was basically what I was looking for. It was in my price range. I wanted to get something good, something of quality, and I think I achieved that. Um, well, so uh, yeah, we'll get right into it, I suppose. Uh, just, just again, tail of the tape, uh, the Hauberk is uh, $214 at Medieval Collectibles. The bracers are 38 for the pair, and the greaves, I will just hold these up again so you get a sense of the scale, the greaves are 43. So just, just a smidge under 295, I believe, for the for the three pieces bought individually. And if you buy them in a set, they actually had the set offered for 313. So don't buy the set, buy them individually, unless there was something going on with the set that I missed. Whatever. Um, they are available in multiple colors. I actually ordered the brown. They sent me, clearly they sent me the black. I'm kind of glad that they did that. I'm partial to black. I, I actually like the look of this a lot better than I think I would have liked the brown. Um, it also comes now in green. I believe that is a new color. I don't think they had that when I first got this. And I did see that the bracers are available in Bordeaux. I did not see the Bordeaux uh, offered for the other pieces, but the bracers I did see in Bordeaux. That's MedievalCollectibles.com. Smidge under 300 for the whole for the whole set. Um, so let's talk about it. What did, what did I get for my money? Well, let's talk about the first thing, aesthetics. Um, it goes without saying that I like how it looks. I've worn it to a couple of costume events, Ren Faire events, that sort of a thing. Um, for the most part, yeah, I, I think it looks cool. Um, it's black studded leather, so like, you know, you might get some sex uh, sex shows, sex toy jokes or something like that. No, it's not. It's not BDSM equipment, and it wouldn't really do too well in that, uh, in that realm anyway. But in terms of uh, reenactment, recreation, that sort of thing, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, in terms of flexibility, again, uh, there are two sizes. There's a large and a small. I'm going to show you the side. There are four straps on the side, which allow a pretty good range of fit. I am pleased to announce that the last time I wore this, I had this on the... Uh, the loosest setting and now I'm on the tightest setting so the king is no longer too fat for his armor that's good <laughs> in any case though how it looks I mean again it looks how it looks that's a subjective judgment you may you may think it looks corny I think it looks cool I have paired it with both a black and brown cloak uh, I've got a belt that goes over it I've got uh, you know accessories <laughs> that I can take with it and generally speaking I've been very happy with it with, with the appearance of it um, I, I like the feel of it the overall weight um, and this is going to come back when we talk about the protective value, but the uh, three pieces together weigh a combined 12, just over 12 pounds, about 12.2 pounds. Um, that's not light. Um, in fact, it's getting upwards of chainmail territory, at least not, maybe not full body, but you know, getting up there. It's definitely heavy. Not so heavy that you can't walk around, that you, you know, you, I've worn it on a hot day for several hours and I was fine, I was comfortable. Uh, it's it's plenty flexible and all that, uh, and it's and it's it's distributed weight pretty well, all that jazz. Uh, but I do need to point out that it weighs 12 pounds because there's a plus and a minus. That the plus, in terms of aesthetics, is that you kind of feel like a badass. You feel like you're wearing something substantial, and you might say, well, why is that important? Well, because if I'm cosplaying, if I'm LARPing, if I'm reenacting, or if I'm just maybe I'm doing a theatrical bit, maybe I'm on, maybe I'm on stage because that's another possibility, possible application for a costume piece. 
that weight, that feel to the armor, it kind of helps you get into character a little bit. I got to tell you, when I had my sword and dagger on my side and I had that cloak going and, you know, it, it puts a little spring to so you kind of strut around a little bit. You do feel, and it's a bit goofy, I will admit. Y'all are probably rolling your eyes like, yeah, right. But it, it gets you into character. It helps you uh, get into character and really... Um, Again, the feel of it is good. Not just the fit, but the weight and the way that it feels substantial really kind of just puts a little spring in your step. You kind of kind of strut around a little bit. You get a little swagger because of it. Maybe those of you who have worn armor more often than I have are over that by now, but that's how I feel about it anyway. Uh, the other thing is, I guess, the only other aesthetic point is the smell. It is leather, so it smells nice. <laughs> it does. I mean, it still has a little bit of that leather smell when I put it on. I've had this for over a year, almost two years, I think, going on, and um, and yet it still smells nice. It still smells like leather. That's kind of cool. It's actually suede, um, suede straps uh, that are basically folded in and then crisscrossed and then riveted together with steel rivets. So again, aesthetics, weight, smell, feel, all of that. I give it top marks. That's all subjective. You may be looking at me going, do you look ridiculous? I would never wear that no matter what. That's fine. That's, that, 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 those are matters of opinion. And those are areas that we're bound to disagree. Here's where it would be very dangerous for us to disagree. Let's talk about the protective value of this. And I'm going to try to be as objective as I can. Um, I'm going to look at three basic attacks, a pierce or thrusting attack, a cut or slashing attack, and then finally a, a clubbing, a bludgeoning type attack. Um, what kind of protective value could I expect? Obviously just on my torso, my head's not covered, most of my arms and legs are not covered, and I'm not actually assuming I'm going to get much of anything from the bracers. Uh, again, well, whatever, we'll talk about it because it's going to go up the same. Against a piercing attack, a sword thrust, a spear thrust, an arrow, we're not even talking about gunfire. Don't, I mean, please, don't, no. It was zero, absolutely none against anything like that. But against a, a, bladed, a bladed thrust attack from a, from a thrusting sword, a spear, an arrow, a knife, a good concerted knife attack, uh, I would rate this as probably negligible plus. Not, not zero, but very small, 1%, um, just over negligible. Uh, it will give you some protection, but really, and remember, this is not being sold as protective gear. And I should mention also, this is a bit of an awkward segue, this is not a brigandine. In spite of the fact that it is sold as a brigandine, it's not a brigandine. If this were a proper brigandine, uh, these rivets would be holding uh, steel plates, overlapping steel plates together on the inside of this. There are no steel plates here. This is just strips of leather riveted together. In fact, what it really is, is what I said earlier, studded leather. Now, those of you who know a little bit about armor are rolling your eyes right now or yelling at the screen or spitting your coffee out or something because there's no such thing as studded leather. That's not a thing. That's something that Hollywood invented or Gary Gygax actually invented for Dungeons and Dragons. It's not actually proper armor. Um, but that's what this is. It's leather with rivets in it. I don't know how else you would describe it. Uh, but it's not a brigandine. So don't, if you think, oh, I saw a video on brigandines. I'm going to get one of those and I'll be protected. Um, don't go and buy this because no, you won't. Um, against a, so against a thrusting attack, it's basically just above negligible. Uh, it does. It is thick. I mean, it's four layers of leather because uh, each each band is folded over, and then there's two on top of each other. It's riveted together. But honestly, the leather itself is pretty soft. It's suede. It's pretty soft. A concerted thrust will get right through it. I don't really think I would have any problem. Again, if you know, if you take that knife and give it a really good roundhouse thrust, or that spear and give it a full thrust. It's, this isn't really going to do much to stop it. Um, the likelihood that you're going to land on right on one of these studs and it's going to stop you is so small. That's where it's negligible plus, because maybe. But the thing is, they're domed. If you hit it square on, it's going to slide right off and continue to pass right through the leather. The other thing is, as I mentioned, they're, they're inter, uh, interwoven bands, which means that in between these four bands, there's holes. There are, in fact, as many holes as there are studs on this thing. So there are, there's, you know, some percentage of this where if you, if you hit just right, you're going to pass right through the leather through one of these holes. Um, but even getting through the material itself would not be particularly difficult. So, yeah, against, against a, a piercing or thrusting attack, negligible plus. I don't want to say negligible. It's not going to give you nothing, but very little. How about against a cut? Against a cut, I'm going to give it slightly better ratings. I'm going to say marginal. 
Um, don't don't wear this uh, to uh, to a HEMA tournament and think you're wearing proper protective gear. You're not. <laughs> against a cut, though, I feel like it has all the problems that it has against a uh, against a thrust. Uh, it's it's not very thick. Um, Scaligrin did a video where he was trying to demonstrate cutting through various materials like t-shirt material, sweatshirt material, and it, just getting through any material is harder than you think. And this is why gambesons work very well, because of the layered uh, bits of material that are sewn together and puffed out, and, and it's very hard to penetrate that. This does give you a layer, but I just don't think this is a layer that is even designed to really protect in that instance. You might get a protection on the first cut, and then the thing splits, and then this, you got nothing in that area. That's what I'm guessing would happen. The only reason I say as high as marginal protection, which I'm going to guess is around, if negligible plus is maybe 1%, marginal is maybe 5%. And I say that because, although it's very unlikely on a point-based attack that I land right on a stud perfectly, if, if somebody is cutting and you think about drawing a line across this, it actually is fairly unlikely that you can draw a straight line anywhere across this and not catch a couple of studs. That might just be enough to prevent it from penetrating, but again, I use words like might and just be enough. That's not really something you want to rely on. And again, the manufacturers will tell you as much when you go to buy it. It's not meant as that, but I mean, again, it is four layers of leather and a whole bunch of steel. Would it give you some protection? I'm going to say marginal. Bludgeoning attack. Somebody comes at you with a club, a baseball bat, a mace, a flail, and hits you right in the torso. What is it going to do for you? Maybe slightly less than marginal. Uh, not negligible. It is a few layers. It is. It has some some stiffness to it. It's not going to do nothing. But again, I'm going marginal at best. Um, uh, you know, it, it it is right up against my body, and it is just a. Again, if you put on two leather jackets, you're probably just as protected from a clubbing attack as you are with this. Would I would I rather be naked? Uh, no, I'll get something. Like I say, marginal, five percent maybe. Um, that's that's about what you're going to get. That's my guess. I'm just I'm just estimating. So against a thrust, uh, negligible plus against a slash, marginal plus, and against a bludgeoning attack, um, marginal. That's what that's what I'm going to go with on this particular armor in terms of, of of practical protective value. Now you notice what I didn't say at any point in this whole review is well it's better than nothing. And that's a question. It's a question you have to ask yourself when you're looking at protective gear, any kind of protective gear even, you know, tactical gear, you have to ask yourself one question, is the protective value I'm getting a positive trade-off given my limited mobility and endurance? Because you noticed earlier I did mention this whole getup weighs 12 pounds. Now that doesn't turn me into, uh, you know, nimble as an ocean liner. I can still move in the thing. But I would be lying if I were to say that I could move just as fast. I mean, you have weights on your wrists. You can't move your hands as fast as you can without these on them. You've got this on your torso. It's weighing you down. It does give weight. You've got weights right on your legs, right on your feet. So again, stepping, it, all of that is slowed down by 12 pounds of leather and steel. And on top of that, uh, especially in a fight, if, it, if it's a protracted uh, kind of a of an encounter and it lasts more than a few seconds you're going to get out of breath pretty fast you mean you, you could be in good shape but again if you're in good shape and you're wearing nothing you can, can what did captain america say i can do this all day um but if you're wearing 12 pounds of semi-protective gear that's not even giving you a whole much a whole lot of protection you are weighed down you're slowed down and if you're trying to compensate for that by putting more effort into it you're wearing yourself down faster so the question is, does this give protective value that is worth the trade-off to limited mobility? I say no. In a practical sense, I say no. If I were going to go into a fight, um, I mean, okay, I suppose if the guy had a little pocket knife, maybe, I, maybe I'd want this. Or maybe I would just realize that, you know, I'm a 47-year-old middle-aged overweight man and uh, I don't move too well anyway, so maybe the protective stuff would help me. But if you knew how to move, and if you rely on movement in an, in an encounter, whether with weapons or, or just hands or whatever, this is going to slow you down. And it's not going to offer a whole lot of protection. Again, I, I kind of, I'm kind of hemming and hawing here because as I'm wearing it, I feel protected. Okay, but I think if I hung this on like a on like a, a bob or a or some sort of, of ballistics torso, and I just took a knife and just went right into it, I don't think it would stop it. I don't think it would stop it. And that's just me I'm talking about. If, if it was somebody who actually knew what they were doing, nah. 
Okay, so aesthetics, I give it top marks. Protective value, it's it's a D. It's 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 barely passing. <laughs> you know, I would not recommend it for that purpose, and I want to make that very clear. Um, let's talk about quality because if you spend three hundred dollars on something, you have a certain expectation of quality, and there are some issues with this that you should be aware of. I don't get me wrong; I don't want to talk anybody out of purchasing this if you've liked what I've been saying so far, especially if you just like the way it looks. I've gotten compliments on the bracers, by the way, uh, not so much on the hauberk, but the the bracers. People have actually like at Renfrew's like, hey, those are cool bracers. So that's probably why they offer these in four colors and the others only in three. I don't know; these do look pretty cool. Let's talk about quality. Um, so there's a couple of there were a couple of issues that I encountered with the pieces that I bought. First of all, uh, on the greaves, it was this could happen anywhere, but it happened to happen on the on, on, my, on my on the original set of greaves that I got. These straps, these are leather, just like this is suede, so it's all leather. This is leather, and leather to anyone who's worked with it. Um, you know, if you work in an industry like furniture, automotive, whatever, that, that uses leather as a fabric, you know that leather has natural flaws. It's a natural material. It has grain. It has creases. It has flaws because not every cow is perfect. <laughs> so leather has flaws. And what happened, and I shouldn't have put that down, what happened was uh, there was a there was a crack right across one of these straps. And the first time I put it on, I pulled it tight and it held, but it was like half of it was pulling apart and the bottom half was stretching. And I'm like, there's no way this is going to stand up to a day of me stopping around at the rent fair in it. And if I had to pull it tight a second or a third time, it would probably break. I really got the sense it was going to break right away. So this is why if you're going to buy it, I do recommend buying it from a place like Medieval Collectibles because I called them back, I emailed them, I sent them a picture. I said, hey, you know, look at this. And they were like, oh, no, that's a defect. Send that back. We'll send you a, uh, a replacement set. And it was real easy. And they did. And I have had no problems with the replacement greaves that they sent me. And everything else is held up to uh, wearing it a couple of times, like I say, all day long, out in the sun, sweating, all that. Um, there is... Another thing that is a little bit, uh, this is not something that Medieval Collectibles or any, any dealer would deal with. I'm going I'm to go ahead and unbuckle this for a second because I want to show you this. This is, um, this is a flaw. It's kind of inherent to how they uh, have, have constructed this. Okay. Mentioned all the rivets earlier. And one thing I do say, it's, it's very easy to get in and out of because four buckles and now I'm just wearing a vest basically. But I want, I want to show you, so these straps here, the buckles and the, and the actual straps for the belt that cross over the chest and same thing for the ones on the side that adjust the fit, um, they're riveted on. They're, they have these rivets here and they're riveted on to the piece. Now when that rivet goes through four layers of leather and they rivet it down, it holds fast. I mean, no problem at all. But remember I mentioned about the, the uh, weaving pattern it was and that in the middle of, of, the, of that four-way weave, there's a hole. If the rivet happens to fall on a hole, it's not going to take much for it to pull right through. And that did happen with this hauberk in a couple of places, more than one place, two or three places as I recall. I think there were two and there was a third that I was like, it looks like it's hanging on by a thread, I'll, I'll pull it through. It was easy to repair. But I need to talk about it because if you spend $300 on something at my recommendation, and I do still recommend the piece. I do like the Robert Brigandine. Um, I think it's a good piece. Um, but, uh, but, but again, if you spend that kind of money, you, you should have an expectation of, of, of quality. So what happened was this strap down here in particular, this one down at the bottom, which was right over the widest part of uh, my body, um, it, it pulled through. And it was, it was basically just flapping in the breeze, and then eventually I think the other rivet pulled through, and, and I had no strap down there. And I'm bummed because I paid a lot of money for this, or what I think of as a lot of money, especially for a costume piece. So what you need to do, I mean, it was a very easy fix. Uh, and, and I don't know if you can see it, uh, but basically the two rivets on there, I, I took some tin snips, I cut them off, it was easy, popped them out, pulled the strap out, kind of made a mental note. I think I might have taken a photograph of how it all folds together and fits. Um, and I went and I got some replacement rivets off of Amazon. I'll put the link below. I don't know if it'll be good by the time you're personally watching this video, but it's it's pretty they're pretty easy to find. I couldn't find them at Michaels or Joanne Fabric or anything like that. They had a lot of rivets, but nothing similar to this. But basically, do an Amazon search. You just got to make sure you have the right diameter and the right finish because they come in uh, gold, silver, and gunmetal. You want the gunmetal. That's what this is. Otherwise, you'll have this bright, shiny button where everything else is dull. Don't make that mistake. 
And then basically, once I had the rivets, I just went back to Michael's. I, I bought a piece of leather, and I, uh, I, I, I riveted it with, uh, with this piece of leather in here to serve as a little bit of a backing. So this way, the rivet would have, would have something to react to and not allow it to pull right through. Um, it was an easy repair. But again, if you spend $300 on something, you're probably not expecting to have to repair it almost right out of the box. I mean, it, it wasn't right out of the box, but it was, again, if, if it's riveted over one of these holes, it's going to pull right through. So all in all, that's all I really have to say about the Robert Brigham Dean. I do recommend it. I do. I like the aesthetics. Uh, don't buy it for practical purposes, although if you do, I mean, you can expect marginal protection at best. Um, again, the bracers and, and greaves are pretty soft, so don't be thinking you can Wonder Woman your way through anything. Uh, the hauberk, it's, it's pretty thick, it's pretty heavy. You'll get something, but don't buy it for that purpose. And then finally, with the quality, know that there is a possibility uh, that you may have to do a repair. And Mythalon, if anybody there is watching and thinking I'm dunking on your product, I'm not. I actually do like this piece, and I do recommend it. But uh, you know, if it really you got to you got to put a backing on your rivets here because if you rivet over a hole, it just doesn't last. It pulls right through. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you're finding these videos interesting, like and subscribe. Uh, next week we are going to be reviewing a lance pointed spear from Cold Steel. Cold Steel has a variety of products. They're a very interesting company, um, and and it's it's a pretty diverse variety of. Uh, quality and execution. They have kind of a mixed reputation uh, with, with weapons enthusiasts, but I will say I've liked everything I've bought from them, and the first piece is going to be the lance-pointed spear. I uh, hope to see you then, and until then, take care.